Hey, everybody. Good evening. So you probably at some point in your life got a hold of some cotton and knit with it and decided that it was horrible and you were never going to knit with cotton again, right? But if you are interested in hearing some fabulous things that you can do and that cotton can be really, really wonderful, stay with me. So I'm Ellen Lewis from Crazy For You, and I'm all about knitting things that are fun to knit and fabulous to wear. If this is your first time with me, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoy this kind of content, you can head over to crazyforyou.com and sign up for the newsletter where I talk about yarn and knitting and life, which is almost the same thing, right? So let's see, we got a whole bunch of folks here. It's nice to see you, Donna and Rita and Emily, Sandy. Hey, Meredith. Hi, guys. Oh, my goodness. So nice to see you. So I, um, I'm excited about talking about cotton. I know cotton gets a bad rap. I've been putting together the, um, the Noro Club membership boxes and a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like cotton. I don't like cotton, whatever, you know? And I hear it all the time in the shop. I don't like cotton. I think that, as I said, cotton gets a bad rap because there are so many different grades of cotton. You know, cotton is graded. Cotton fibers are graded in exactly the same way that merino fibers or wool fibers are graded. You know, the length of the staple, because the longer the staple, the less twist is required to get it to hold together. So cottons like Pima and Lyle and Egyptian cotton are beautiful and have really long staples and they don't require a very tight twist to hold them together. Some of the cottons that you've probably seen that make really awesome dishcloths are short staples or they're the broken bits or whatever, and they need a really, really tight twist to hold them together. So they end up feeling like string. In fact, they probably are string. I mean, Butcher string is made of cotton too, right? <laughs> you wouldn't want to wear it, but it's great for tying up things. So tell me in the chat if you, how you feel about cotton, because I want to know kind of what I'm dealing with here. So let's, let, let's have it, you know, tell me everything. Hey, Gwen. Hey, Phyllis. Nice to see you. Hey, Evelyn. Okay. So tell me in the chat what you think about cotton. I did make a little presentation for you and I have my little camera here. So in case I need to show you anything and I'm hoping that it, that it works tonight. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. Let's see. Where is my share screen? There we go. All right. So Cotton really is the queen of summer fabrics. I'm not going to say that it's the king because I think linen is the king of summer fabrics, but we'll talk about that on another day. But cotton really is the queen of summer fabrics because it's what we want to wear when the weather is hot, right? It keeps us cool. You know, it really does. So, um, as I said, not all cotton is created equal. There are all different qualities of cotton. And let's see, let's see, let's see. Rita, let folks. Okay. Emily says Rowan cotton cashmere is one of my favorites. Yes, indeed. Mine too, girlfriend. Yeah. I like most cotton yarns, but some are hard to work with. Absolutely. hundred percent true. My first cotton knit, I did not like, but have since used cotton blends and like them. Yes, cotton blends can be a wonderful thing. You know, when you add just a little bit of something else to it, in the same way that um, Emily was talking about cotton cashmere, that little bit of cashmere in there, I think gives it a little bit more soft hand. Um, Meredith, I like cotton. Cumulus, summer light decay. Yep, 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 yep. Hey, most cottons but can be splitty. So tell me in the chat, you, um, E, Sheed, tell me in the chat how you carry your yarn. Do you carry your yarn in your right hand or your left hand? Because it makes a difference on what you think is splitty. So I'd be interested in hearing that. Hey, Alicia. Hey, hey. All right. <laughs> 
Thank you, Alicia. Yes. Welcome. Remember to like and subscribe. And while you're at it, if you like this, leave a comment. I love my comments. I respond to every single comment personally. So, yay. Um, I like cotton, but don't like all cotton yarn. Yep. Summer light four ply. Didn't we all start with Lily sugar and cream? I, you know, I never did, but I do know that a lot of people started with sugar and cream. And I, you know, as, as nice as that yarn is for dishcloths, I think it gives cotton a bad name, you know, because it's not, it's not something you necessarily want to wear next to your skin. And it is very hard on your hands, right? Cotton <laughs> does all over that. Okay. Joe's a righty. Yep. Working with 100% Pimina. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I did. It's rough. Yeah. So tell me how you, you in particular, Ishid, tell me how you carry your yarn in your right hand or your left hand. Because you were the one who said it was splitty. And that is absolutely true. Okay. So we've we've bashed um, the sugar and cream enough. I know that there it has its place. It absolutely does. I just don't think it's great for garments. My opinion. You love it. You do you. Right? Um but not all cotton is created equal. High quality cotton has a long staple. It is silky. It is smooth. It is fine. Okay. And when you talk to about cotton in hand, knit, hand knitting cotton yarns, it's also combed. So we talk about that process of combed cotton. You've probably heard that. You've seen it in the Land's End catalog, 100% combed cotton shirt. What does that even mean? Okay. So combing is kind of like the process that they do when they're preparing wool fibers for a worsted spun. They comb them so that they're all going in the same direction. It's like combing your hair. You know, you smooth it out. Any little tangly bits get out. Any little broken bits. We hope we don't have broken bits in our hair, but we probably do. But all of that gets out. So what you're left with when you have combed cotton is only the longest, silkiest fibers. Okay. So that's what they use to make quality hand knitting cotton yarn is combed cotton that starts with cotton from a very high quality plant, like an Egyptian or Pima or Lyle that has those long staples. So it gives it a soft feel and it has fewer ends. So those ends sticking out are what they have to twist it really tight to make it um, hold together, right? Does everybody get that? Yes. Okay. So let me jump back right here um, to Ms. Sheed. All right. She carries her yarn in her left hand continental. So I'm just going to stop real quick and say, you know, this has to do with the way that cotton is twisted. And tonight I'm talking only about your standard plied kind of cotton. I have mm -hmm. talked in other videos and other podcasts about all the different modern constructions that you can use um, to make cotton feel differently. You know, you can have a chainette construction, you can have it blown, you can have it mixed with other stuff. But basically what I'm talking about tonight is your standard plied cotton. And cotton is plied in what they call an S twist. So if you look at it, you'll see that the angle of the twist is like an, an S, okay? Versus a Z twist, which you get with a, a, a single or some crepe yarns. And when you hold your yarn in your left hand, you are creating a twist in the opposite direction. So you're basically untwisting it. If you do a long tail cast on, you know what I mean? how the tail gets untwisted if it's an S twist. So it's something to watch out for. Like if you hold your yarn in your left hand and you have a Z twist, you probably love it, but you may get extra twist worked into it. If you hold your yarn in your right hand, a Z twist is going to kind of come undone as you work with it. So one thing to remember when you're working with cotton or with a yarn that has a twist in that direction and you carry your yarn in your left hand, remember every now and then to stop and let the yarn kind of retwist because that you're just taking the twist out just because of the way you do it. There's nothing anybody's doing wrong. It's just a difference in the way the motion of the knitting affects the twist of the yarn as you work it, depending on whether you have it in your right hand or your left hand. So I probably should make a whole video on that. But anyway, that's a thought on why some people feel like um, cotton or particular yarns are splitty and other people feel like they're not. It's not that they are or they aren't. It's just that the way you knit them and the way they're twisted go together in a certain way. Okay. So back on 
this. Okay. I'm working with Rowan Hannett cotton now. Okay, so high quality cotton, it just feels nice. So it's like everything, you know, there's a difference in quality, right? Um, and it's, it's important to remember that, you know, I'm not bashing anybody who cannot afford better quality cotton, but I think most of us understand that there's a price to be paid for quality. Um, so what are the advantages of cotton? It's cool to wear. I love cotton because here in the mid-Atlantic, I can wear it all four seasons, right? I'll wear a cotton sweater mid-winter layered over something because unlike Sandy, who's in um, Maine, it just doesn't get that cold here. So I find that a garment that I've knit in cotton is something that I'm going to be able to wear more actually than maybe something that I've knit in wool. So I'm always sorry that I don't have more cotton sweaters. I don't know. It's, it's just not as much fun to knit with cotton. And we all know that. And I'm just going to say that. Um, it's a great transitional fabric, especially for, for us here in the fall. You want something that feels and looks fallish in September and October. But in this, in this latitude, it's just not cold enough to wear wool yet in September and October when you're really done with summer colors and things. So a great looking cotton sweater in a fall color or something that feels a little fallish is a perfect transitional piece. I also love cotton because it's so easy care, you know, throw it in the washer, throw it in the dryer. Most cases, it'll be fine. If you're in doubt, you would definitely want to, to wash and dry your swatch as you are planning to wash and dry your sweater. Um, right. So the other thing is that it has great stitch definition. Okay. Have you ever noticed that? So um, cotton has, because it's so smooth, it really makes your stitches pop. You know, I love that. So it's great for knitters like Amelia, who love to um, do lots of fancy stitch work. Okay, so cotton this is an example. Of I'm not going to play that video that I put in there just in case. I'm going to go ahead and show you in real time, if you will allow me. Um, all right, mouse, I'm going to show you this. And I'm going to put this out there. Okay, so here's my little camera and there's my microphone. Okay, so what is loft? Let's talk about loft. Loft is when you have a lot of fluffiness in the yarn. This is a really, really thick yarn. It is, it is as thick as a pencil, okay? It's really smooshy. But I can twist it to make it really skinny. So do you see how I'm twisting that way, way down? I can make it very thin, not as thin as fingering, but certainly thinner, oops, certainly thinner than my pencil here. Hmm? So why is that? When I squeeze this yarn, when I twist it, what I'm doing is I'm twisting all the air out of it. So loft is really a fiber's tendency to hold air it's what makes it squishy, right? It's what, you know, it's why these fluffy, bulky yarns are so soft and cozy. They got a lot of air in there. They're very lofty. On the other hand, this is kind of the polar opposite. This here is Rowan Cotton Glacé, which is a beautiful yarn, but it's small to start with. But even if I twist it really, really, really tightly, I can't make it any skinnier. Do you see that? There isn't any air in there for me to squeeze out. So it's not lofty at all. No loft at all. Okay. Does that make sense? So cotton doesn't have that loft. So let me go back to my presentation and get me my next page. Um, whoops. Already this is an example. Okay. So the reason cotton is nice and cool to wear is because it doesn't have any air trapped in its, um, you know, in its fibers. So air is very insulating, you know, so we want a nice cozy sweater. We want something that's going to trap 
a lot of air and, and keep us warm from the outside. Okay. So cotton doesn't do that. So you don't have a thick, cozy fabric when you're working with cotton. The other thing is if you were to look at a bit of that fabric that I showed you the yarn of, so here's a, here's a little swatch of that. Do you see how the stitches are really plump and they, they bloom into each other and they, they make this really plushy fabric. Cotton, on the other hand, kind of stays to itself, right? Even though this is knitted in on a very tight needle, this is, this is Hannock cotton knitted at a gauge of five stitches to the inch. It's very tight. You can see that the stitches don't bloom into each other. There's still room for the air to circulate, to blow through. Okay, so that's another reason that cotton is so comfortable to wear in the summer and why we like it and it keeps us cool. It's also why it has that great stitch definition because you know that when a yarn tends to sort of relax into itself, it doesn't necessarily showcase your stitches as much so that a slightly fuzzy texture um, isn't as crisp. It's not that it doesn't have stitch definition. It's just that cotton yarn is very crisp and it showcases things like cables and such, right? So it gives a smooth sort of polished finish. Don't get me wrong. I love wool as much as the next guy, right? But I think cotton is often overlooked as a legitimate knitting material. People think, oh, I don't knit with cotton because it's, you know, they think it's cheap or that it's crummy or that they're not going to be able to wear it. But a good quality cotton sweater is something that you are going to love and wear if you're in my area all year round for a really long time because it does hold up. There's another thing I want to say is that um, especially something like this cotton glacé, hand -knit cotton is not mercerized, but cotton glacé is mercerized. So that means it's undergone a special process that squeezes more of the air out of it and makes it sort of shiny and it makes it extremely durable. And it also makes the dye, um, makes the yarn take the dye really well. So cotton glacé and other mercerized cottons have these really brilliant colors and kind of a lovely sheen to them. Okay. Does that make sense? I would love to hear your thoughts on that. So yes, Donna, it's 91 where she is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Sandy says it's 45 where she is. Yes almost um, middle of May. <laughs> Too funny. All right. Okay. Let's see. We have a question here. What about knitted cotton garments? What is a standard shrinking rate? Okay. I'm really glad you asked that because that's a brilliant question. One of the reasons that cotton gets mercerized is that it keeps it from shrinking. We think about cotton in our clothing in one way, right? We think about jeans, okay? And jeans obviously are gonna shrink a lot. They are not made of a mercerized cotton. So mer anything that you knit in a mercerized cotton, that whole shrinkage has already happened in the washing, okay? Um, so anything like that is not going to shrink. I would say that the shrinkage on something like a hand knit cotton is going to be pretty minimal as well, particularly if you knit it fairly tightly. Um, I have not experienced shrinkage from the washing. You can get a little shrinkage from the dryer, which is why I tend not to dry my sweaters all the way in the dryer. Drying them all the way in the dryer can also maybe cause a little bit of biasing depending on the tightness of the twist. So um, I don't have a number for you. I wish I did, but I will say that you can avoid shrinkage of your cotton garments by washing them, you know, in the machine on, you know, gentle cycle and then putting them, giving them a good spin, right? So when you wash something on gentle, it doesn't get all the water out. It, I usually do a cotton sweater on a gentle, and then I will do a drain and spin so that it spins most of the water out. That's a problem with cotton is it's very absorbent. So if you don't get that water out during the spin cycle or, you know, by a very, um, and, I, and I don't want you to twist it, you know, or wring it. So I do like it in the spin cycle, get all that water out. Otherwise it's going to take a long time to dry, which is why I start it in the dryer. 
okay, on low. And then I let it dry flat for the rest of the way. And that's going to keep you from having very much shrinkage in your, um, your knitted cotton garments at all. I hope that helps. Okay, let's see. Um, where were we? So anyway, I did promise that I would share with you some of, I'm looking at the time, share with you some of my favorite cotton garments to knit for now and for transition. So I am working on a garment that I'd love to share with you. It's this swatch. This is the swatch for it. This is Veronique and this is my current crush. It is on the cover of, um, Rowan Magazine 73, and I think it's really cute. A lot of us are knitting, and I would love to hear in the chat if you are if you are knitting that. So let's share this. Here we go. Okay, so that's Veronique, and that is knit in hand-knit cotton. It is absolutely lovely. Hi, Ann Smith. This is one that is knit in Dijon. Um, the yarn that I was just showing you, the uh, Cotton Glacé. This is from last year's, um, I think last year's, possibly even two years ago, but it's still one of my favorites. Like I said, it's called Dijon Knit in Cotton Glacé by Georgia Farrell, and it's just so, so cute. I've wanted to knit this for, for years and years. Obviously, it's still on my radar if it is, <laughs> you know, still here because I, I love the shape of it and I love the um, I love the little bit of texture on there. So it's fun to knit, not only fabulous to wear. All right, this is Spring Green. This is by Ann B. Hansen. This is Knit and Cotton Glacé, another one that has great stitch work in there. So it would have good, you know, the stitch definition with the Cotton Glacé is very pretty. I think that's a lovely one. I think this is probably Knit in the Round. This is Seashell, another really pretty one by um, Chloe Thurlow in Cotton Glass Say. Love this. Hey, wait a minute. Hang on. Meredith says she tested spring green. Oh, that's so cool. I would love to hear about it. Tell us in the chat how it's knit and how you liked it and what yarn you use. Seashell is really cute. This is the back. The front looks just the same, except there's no buttons. And I showed you the back because I think it's just so stinking cute. I can't stand it. Whoops, where is, I missed Rosal on top. I'll have to go back and find that. Um, but if you happen to see it, it is uh, by Sari Norland in Summerlight DK. Maybe if uh, somebody finds it and puts it in the chat, I'll bring it up. Uh, I was, anyway, behind the power curve on this. So this is another one um, in Cotton Glacé in Stone. Love this, very pretty. I am a big fan of this sort of cut in shoulder, as many of you know. I think that's really, really nice. Uh, Sandy had a question here. Let's hang on and take a take a look at this. I've had a, a couple of cotton blends and mercerized cottons that bias. Never knew how to avoid. Yes. Yep. So don't dry them all the way in the dryer. It's the drying that causes that biasing. Yep. And it only happens in the last bit. So it's very frustrating. You think you're fine and then you're not. So love this in stone, in this stone in cotton glacé. Quail Studio does so many really pretty, very modern looking wardrobe staples. And this is one of them. I think I'm gonna have to knit this. Oh my goodness, my cue is out of control. Um, this is an oldie but a goodie, um, striped top. This is super cute. I didn't show the back, but it has a way deep V. I had a number of people knit this. This is in Mode Collection 2. And I bring this particular garment up because it's one of those perfect transitional pieces. Remember I talked about cotton being such a great transitional piece? This would be wonderful in the spring and the fall over a blouse and then on its own in the summer. Depending on the colors you used for this, this could be a perfect spring transition or a fall transition, as well as something that you can wear all summer long. Like I said, it has a deep V in the back. I know Norma knit this and it was so pretty. Um, and I've seen her wear it many times. 
Okay, another question here. Let's see. Can you steam cotton yarn garment as well? Yes, I have. I always steam block my my cotton, and I like to steam block my cotton because it doesn't take so long to dry. Because if you're blocking it, you don't want it to be um, lying there wet for a million years, and you need to get it good and wet in order to block it properly, right? So absolutely, steam steam your um, your yarn, your cotton, your your pieces before you seam them. Thanks for that question. I appreciate it. All right. What's next? Anyway, this is a this is a great wardrobe piece. This is such a capsule item. Nope, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, love this. Meredith, did you uh did you happen to to test knit this too? This looks like a Meredith piece. I think this is so sweet. It's called Provence Top and it's by Ekaterina Goro Beva. It is worked in a worsted weight cotton. It would be beautiful in hand knit cotton. I love, I love everything about this. I may have told some of you that I am going to um, south of France with my daughter this summer. So I'm super excited about this. It has all these little lavender, this lavender motif at the top. And that's so such an iconic look um, for the south of France. So I think this is absolutely beautiful. Again, an example of a garment that would showcase your lovely stitch work. Hand it cotton knits up really fast too, because it's a worsted gauge. I think this is worked at a gauge of 18 stitches over four inches. Tell me if you like this or if I'm the only one. This is fawn. Okay, this is the kind of sweater I wish I had more of. Long sleeved cotton sweater it is perfect for right now, okay? I don't feel really comfortable this early in the season wearing very short sleeves or no sleeves. So a cotton long-sleeved or three-quarter sleeve sweater is absolutely my jam. I love this so much. I think it's beautiful. Oh, good. Lots of people like Provence. Love to see that. Meredith has it in her queue already. Oh, Love it, love it, love it. All right, so this is fun. Again, in cotton glacé, this would be an absolute workhorse sweater. You would wear it forever. These garments um, that I'm showing you, like fawn and this other one, um, stone, they are both featured in a, a booklet called, I'm going the wrong way, sorry, whoops. Oh my goodness. Oh my, how do I get this going the other direction? There. All right. Um, they're featured in a collection of four garments for exclusively for cotton glacé. So very pretty. This one is Bay. This is in the Mode collection this year. And if you want to see more of these kinds of garments, Shh. Hey, my dogs are playing with their toy. Uh, see more of these. I did a, a um, I did a podcast on the Mode Collection. This is one of my favorites. It's just a beautiful, easy fitting, oversized um, lace garment. This would be very cool to wear in the summer, even though it's long sleeved. Look at how open it is. That openness, the way it hangs away from the body, gives air and opportunity to circulate up and around your body. So it's very, very comfortable to wear. And again, it would be fun to knit, great stitch work. That's called Bay, Martin Story. Um, this is called Taupe. This is another one from that collection of four. Beautiful transition piece. A cardigan is always a perfect transitional garment. You can take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on. And a cotton one is just perfect. You can knit this and leave it in your office or in your car for when the air conditioning is too cold. <sighs> My dog has a squeaky toy. I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, so this is taupe and I think this is really pretty. Oh, wait a minute, Alicia. Oh my gosh. All right, let's see. Rita, you like that pattern. Okay, that pattern is on Ravelry, okay? That's one that you can get on Ravelry. 
Alicia, yes, shocking. Alicia likes the Provence tub. It's not too busy for you, darling? <laughs> I love it. I think it's beautiful. Okay, who likes taupe? Anybody like a cotton cardigan? I think they're so wonderful and practical. Practical. Oh, that's not exactly an enticing word, is it? And that is it. So those are the garments that I think are standouts for right now to give you a, like a sense of some of the things that you might want to do with cotton yarn. Um, I have a sweater here on my mannequin. It's always on my mannequin that I absolutely love. It is one of my favorites. It and another custom fit that I did in a now discontinued Shibui yarn called Rain. Perfect long sleeve, three quarter length. They're, they're pretty much identical sweaters and I love them. I get so much wear out of them. And I have another sweater I wanna grab real quick and show you. You have seen this on my mannequin many times. It's just, this is by Sally Melville and this is from her first book in the knitting series called The Knit Stitch. This is called the, um, this is called Where's the Opaque with a caddy version because it has a closed back. Honestly, I want to tell you that I knit this sweater back in 2005. It's knit in a, um, a worsted weight cotton. It's, it's been discontinued. It was a cotton called Provence Cotton by Classic Elite. Similar, a little heavier gauge, but similar to the um, cotton glacé. And I will tell you, 2007 was a long time ago. I have washed and worn and washed and worn that sweater for a million times. And to answer your question, LPGA, about shrinkage, I've never experienced any shrinkage with it, and it still looks brand new. So that's another thing that goes in the positive category, the, the win column for cotton, is that it's so durable. Quality cotton never pills. It stays looking really, really nice. So if you are thinking, I don't like cotton, I don't want to knit with cotton, I, you know, it's not worth my time, it really is a great garment to have. A cotton garment is just something that a, a wool garment never can be. You know, they're not the same. You need both, right? That's why we have chocolate and vanilla. We need both. We need vanilla ice cream and chocolate sauce and chocolate ice cream and whipped cream, right? <laughs> okay. So that is what I have for you tonight. And I hope that this has been as much fun for you as it has been for me. I love championing yarns that maybe don't get as much love as they should. And um, again, if you, are, if you are new and you are not subscribed, please subscribe. Please leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you maybe if there was something that you would like me to do differently or something that you would like me to cover in an upcoming podcast. I would love to do that for you. And if you want more from me, go to crazyforyou.com and you can subscribe to the newsletter. There's also a link in the um, in the description below. So I will see you next time, my beautiful knitters. And until then, keep knitting and create something beautiful. Good night.